Good morning. <laughs> There's an exciting news some of us might have known. It's about the Bible. <laughs> This Thursday in New York, that the oldest, most complete Hebrew Bible was sold for 38.1 million U.S. dollars, become the most valuable manu uh, manuscript sold at auction. <laughs> This context sends soon the 38.1 million dollar Hebrew Bible is thought to, be, to have been written about 1,100 years ago. The U.S. former ambassador, Alfred Moses, bought it for the ANU, Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv, Israel. For Christians, some of us call the Hebrew Bible the Old Testament. Today, the scripture is found here. Let us pray. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This is one of the common prayers used in the worship service, especially for the preachers in preparation for their sermon. Today I just read in one of the Taiwan's Bibles, Bakele Dai Yi Han Ji Ban, published in 1933, translated by Reverend Dr. Thomas Buckley, who was a missionary of the Presbyterian Church of Scotland to Formosa from 1875 to 1935, the year he died. Reverend Buckley was also the first president of my seminary in Tainan, Taiwan. The second verse of the prayer today is from the new standard, uh, new revised standard versions, update edition, published and translated in 2021 by the National Council of Churches in the United States. The original NSV was published in 1989 and the previous old RSV was published in 1952. The purpose of this updating different versions is to reflect on the daily language, for in this case is English, in an understanding of biblical interpretation, and also lots of correction to the previous mistakes. It's always a challenge to comprehend a foreign language such as Hebrew Bible and the culture. Translation in this case is to do the job of from word to word, or we call it literally, or true to the original meaning, art and the beauty of the sentence, and the appropriate cultural implications. In this case, it's beyond the translation. It's a hermeneutics, bring the meaning from the divine to us, the mortals. I always, it always, um, it was very difficult for me to understand how could a Scottish person come to Taiwan and translate the Bible from the original language, Hebrew or Greek, into Taiwanese. He's a Scot Scottish, how can he make it? And Scott uh, talking about the scripture today, Psalm 68, they had lots of problems to figure out when Psalm 68 was composed, how many sources are included, and what this psalm want to say. The beginning of the psalm today, let God rise up, let the enemy be scattered, represents the cry of Moses in the book of Numbers, chapter 10, 35. When Israelites were ready to depart from the Mount Sinai and enter the desert. It is the song of the ark. The ark is a symbol of the God who dwelled in the ark and walked before the Israelites. Scholars argue this is an old, old world tradition about Exodus. And also because right after the great military uh, victory in the book of Numbers, 
God even asked Moses to create two silver trumpets to summon the congregation and the leaders. Scholars also argue this might be a liturgical text for the ceremony. The verse 4, the psalmist asked the audience to sing to God, pray God's name, and mentioned, lift up a song to him who rise upon the clouds. We all agree this part is a song of worship, but to whom? Who is the purpose, who is the object of worshiping? If you are also a fan of Harry Potter, Harry Potter, one of my <laughs> favorite novels that's in our time, you might be quite familiar with the following terms. He who, not ma- he who must not be named, you know whom, the Dark Lord, in the whole novel. Tom Marvelous Rydell was the one of the greatest wizards in his time. Tom Rydell became Lord Voldemort in this novel. No one wanted to call his name due to the fear and oral traditions at that time. Nobody really saw him, but people are afraid about Lord Voldemort. When they try to mention Lord Voldemort, they will be stopped by using his nickname all the time. His real name became a taboo, unspeakable. It is also the same in our time. Several years ago, we still use you know who when we mention a president of a country in the far, far away galaxy. It is similar to the word of the Hebrew Bible, the rider of clouds. It is the nickname of a Canaanite god, Baal, who is also the god of storm, the god of rain, the god of fertility, the god of sky. Without Baal, the earth is the desert, and no life can habitate or survive. No, no civilization is possible. It's a very powerful god in Canaanite. Therefore, verse four, five and six could have two different understandings. Is, is this father of orphans and protector of the widow, the god of Israelites, the Adonai Adonai, or the god of the sky, the god of the Canaanites, who will be, the, who will be liberated from the prisoner to prosperity, and who, who can make it? It is a piece of memory from the Exodus, the liberation from the slavery in Egypt, or a religious mixture of Israelites and the Canaanites. However, we can read a strong statement from verse 7 to 10. The psalmist claim that it is the God of Sinai, God of Israel, who went out before God's people, shook the earth, poured out the rain and the water from the sky, and made the land fertile and have a heritage restored. The psalmist demonstrates a strong faith, and it might be based on his, her, or their experience, or the community he, she, or they belong to. At the end of Psalm 68, we can also notice a shift and transformation of this God's image. People knew Baal was a god of sky, but the author here, he can grow God here is the writer of the heavens, the ancient heavens, kingdom of the earth. The God of Sinai, the God of Israel, is beyond Baal's limits, sky, and it stands till the heaven, and not only one heaven, it's multiple heavens. It's not only the individual's perspective of the author, but also a collective memory and testimonies of the community through different times. The image and the power or fear of the writer of the cloud has been shaped and transformed. Finally, there is a sanctuary of God of Israel that beneath the sky and heavens, all kingdoms and people, Israelites or not, can be gathered, enjoy the abundance, and be free from the threat of enemies. The psalmist, the author, the composer, 
has a new understanding of God beyond Baal. One of the important philosophers in the 20th century, Hans George Gadamer, argued that our knowledge is limited by the language and standpoint we know. Our understanding of the world and its meaning is constrained by a limited horizon. We are limited by our background, culture, gender, religions, or the family histories. If there is an objective truth or ultimate meaning, we cannot reach that because we were limited by our limitations. Because we only can see so far, just near us, just right before us. And hence, George Gadamer argued, unless we start to collect something beyond ourselves, outside our world and community boundary and traditions, we will not have the opportunity to encounter different horizons or make it closer to, t- to touching the truth. If you try our best, have a dialogue among the horizons, Gadamer called it the fusions of horizons, from those fuzzy visions, from those fuzzy horizons, maybe, maybe we can unveil the curtain and reveal the image of the truth, the God we, the follower of Jesus, are looking for. The other scripture in the common lectionary today is the book of Acts, chapter 1, 6 to 14. Jesus saying goodbye to his disciples. The Bible says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in the Judea and the Samaria, and to the end of the earth. When, we, when he had said this, as he were watching, he was lifted up in the cloud, took him out of the sight. In the church tradition, last Thursday, three days ago, is called Ascension. Forty days after Easter, the day Jesus left his disciples ascended to the sky. The early disciples looked at the sky and knew their teacher was gone now. But Christians believe Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, will descend and come back again, bring the ultimate peace and the final judgment to all flesh. And now we Christians receive those testimonies and memories. We continue to look at the sky, knew what we are looking for. Is it the God of power? mercy and justice, the unconditional love for everyone, the salvations and protections are not only for the Jews, but for everyone, for the straight, for the gay, for the lesbian, for bisexual, for transgender, and the genderqueer are all included, not only for Europeans, Americans, but also for the Pacific Islanders, Asian and Africans even the polar bear, penguins, and the chihuahuas are also included. Galaxies and ocean are also included. Church people also experience a renewed understanding and horizon of God, being, being empowered by the Holy Spirit. The worship bulletin today, in our hand today, is a collective work from reading the common lectionary. In the revised common lectionary today, the range of Psalm 68 is from verse 1 to 10 and 33 to 36. In our Pew Bible, the NISV, there are only 35 verses. Where is the missing verse in the common lectionary? And what caused it? If you read closely in our Pew Bible, this is a title, Praise and Thanksgiving. It was added afterwards. It does not appear in the Hebrew Bible originally. But right after the title, this is the original first verse. Namanazahat li David shinamaho shu 
to the leader of David a psalm, a song. In the Hebrew Bible and some English version Bible, it's the first verse of Psalm 68. The verse was written in Hebrew to indicate the author, the background, and how he can be trans- uh, performed. Such as the first verse of Psalm 67 indicate this psalm, this psalm should be performed with a stringed instrument. The first verse of Psalm 68 indicates lily, an uncertain instrument, maybe a lily-shaped straight trumpet, or a melody, a tune. And the psalm is to, uh, supposed to be known by that way. The first verse of Psalm 63 indicates a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. The same translation of the Bible published in different time also number the verse quite differently from time to time. For example, for the most popular Bible, King James, King James Version, published in 1911, delete the whole first verse without any footnote. But the, the new King James Version, published in 1979, add back the footnotes. They do know why it was deleted. In the NISV we read today, there's no footnote about what's going on there. But the update edition add a note let you know what's going on. For the NIV, the new international version, published in 2011, has a complete footnote to take you now, addressing like this. In the Hebrew text, chapter 68, 1 to 35, it numbered 2 to 36. In some Bible, in the full 36 verses, is in the Bible. With the first verse, we are wondering what the conflict and challenges that David had to deal with. Was that a warfare? But with whom? Was, was that a religious crisis? Was that a political threat from one of his enemy? What was the God David would like to refer to? What did, we, what did he want to find a safe space, a sanctuary away from his enemy? Why a God who pay attention to the poor, to the captives, is the essential figure here? Why a sanctuary, a safe space with protection and restored heritage is vital to David? If you attend the concert yesterday, you might find it was another practice of fusions of horizons. The musician Zi Chen Wu utilized her skill in combining elements from various places, tunes, and arrangements, and having them in a dialogue with jazz. The concert is a good approach by using the jazz to introduce a new thing from the people who knew already. The first song of the concert yesterday is Olive Tree, Gan Nan Shu. It was a forbidden song in Taiwan in 1970 the 80s. The first lyrics of this song is this. Don't ask me where I'm from. My hometown is far away. Why am I roaming around? far away, roaming around, roaming around. The KMT government in Taiwan at that time thought this song was a threat against the favored political identity. In that period of time, anyone who tried to oppose the government would get arrested immediately, even disappear. The KMT government only allowed the people to have one identity, saying that you are from China, you are Chinese. That's all, period. For the people, we have quite, uh, quite different understanding of ourselves. We want to learn about our own identity and the culture and our heritage. This song was way too popular. It became a dangerous threat to the government at that time. But I think even till today, there are still many places they are not allowed to sing particular songs, even in the church. Some of my friends from Hong Kong, 
They are afraid to use a famous, famous, a famous hymn in their worship service. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. This hymn was used in 2014, the umbrella movement in Hong Kong, when Christians gathered together on the street protesting the government and asked for democracy. They sing this hymn together. They ask him for God to be with them. They can fight for the justice. But this team soon be banned by the government, by both Hong Kong and Chinese government. A resonated another song was banned by the government too. The title is Glory to Hong Kong. If you look it up on Google, the search engine, Glory to Hong Kong was played in different international competitions. When any player from Hong Kong, they win the gold medal, they will play this song as the Hong Kong national anthem. This song talking about the spirit of Hong Kong people, the Hong Konger, and how can they find their true identity under different kind of colonizers. They want to find their true self. This song becomes the important symbol of all the people not only in Hong Kong, but also for also those Hong Kong people, they are overseas. They are scattered all around the world. They try to sing this song together, tell the story together. In the whole song, there's no master, the, the dark lord in the song, but people know this song represents something special. And today, the opening hymn, Jay just mentioned, is Taiwanese tune. God create heaven and earth. The composer, Ida Law, he, is, he was born in 1938. So he's a Japanese when he was born. He became Chinese, he was forced to be. And now he's a Taiwanese as his self-declaration. Uh, and he's now living in the United States with his parents. He's a parent with his children, grandchildren. So he's here. He used the native Taiwanese tunes in this hymn. So when we, when we sing this hymn, we feel quite different than we have known in our hymn now. But through the differences, it seems that we can see the, the fuzzy visions, horizons in front of me. Move us forward to extend our understanding of the kingdom of God and all the diversities in this world created by God. And the closing hymn today is a popular folk song from Philippines. We can enjoy that and know what's going on in Philippines. When we sing this song, this hymn, we are trying to connect with different people around the world who worship God, worship the God we know from our Bible, from our community. And we will know one thing important, that our church is a sanctuary in Psalm 68, a safe space, a place of unconditional love and diversity. And all the poor people can come here, habitat, and have their heritage restored and thrive. If we read Psalm 68 through David's perspective and through Psalmist's edition, through the common missionary, three days after ascension, Jesus' departure from his disciple, in the context of the last Sunday, today's the last Sunday before the Pentecost, and on the Pacific Islander and Asian American Ministry Sunday worship service, we are practicing Gadamer's fusions of horizon. We walk through Moses. Mount Sinai, Book of Numbers, Psalm of Ark, Baal, the God of Storm, Adonai, Adonai, the God of Israel, and the one who become flesh and live among us, die and are resurrected, and now ascended to the sky. From the wandering Amar man, Egyptians, Canaanites, Israelites, Jews, Greek, Gentiles, caught and uncaught, the others to all God's children, from Sinai, 
city of David, Jerusalem, Rome, perhaps to Hyde Park, in this sanctuary, the house of God's children. For me, my journey will add Taiwan, my internship in Hong Kong, my ecumenical training program in Philippines, and the visit to Taizé of France. What are your experience of fusion of horizon and the encounter of unknown? And how will you describe what God has revealed himself, herself, and themselves to you, to your family, and to your friend, and to our community of faith? Let's keep singing, keep sharing, and keep listening. Amen.